Hey, it's Don Skaggs again with Empowered Inventing, where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom, so you can turn them into real things like products and businesses. Now today, um, I want to talk to you about the invention that a big corporation didn't want that ended up becoming a top selling office supply product of all time and that's the post-it note. The post-it note is probably one of the most prolific items you'll find in an office nowadays. Got a few behind me, you know, you gotta have a prop every now and then. Uh, so, um, in the beginning though, it was an item that almost nobody seemed to want. At least in the little bubble universe that was 3M Corporation. So it was invented by a man named Sil uh, Spencer Silver, who was working at 3M, and he had, uh, was trying to create a super strong adhesive that was used in the aerospace uh, for building planes. Now, it's, I guess, kind of ironic that instead of uh, uh, creating this super strong adhesive, he actually wound up creating something that had the actual opposite effect. Uh, so he managed to create this very weak, pressure-sensitive adhesive called, uh, uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this now, and I should be able to pronounce this because I used to live in this world, uh, acrylate uh, copolymer microspheres. Acrylate, that was, that's, that's how you pronounce it. Acrylate copolymer microspheres. Uh, so anyway, say that three times real fast. So 3M saw this and said, no, this is a very, very weak uh, adhesive. This is too weak to be useful. This is unimportant. That's what the word they used. They said, this is unimportant. So, uh, but it did have two very useful features. Uh, you, you could peel it away with no residue, uh, just, just like you, we all now know with post-it notes. And you could... Um, it was reusable. You could put it other places, and, and it worked. So, uh, and almost anywhere. So, uh, I think Silver kind of saw there was something, so he was trying to pitch it as, okay, the, you know, maybe this could be used somewhere for something. And you ever come up with an idea or an invention or discovery, and, and you kind of think, I know this belongs somewhere, but I don't know where yet. So, uh, he was trying to shop it around, and he actually had an idea for it. Uh, but bef before he came up with this idea, he was trying to find a marketable use, and this went on for like five years. So, uh, but at one point he did spray a bulletin board with the adhesive. It's kind of the reverse thing of what we know now. So he took a bulletin board, sprayed it with the adhesive, he sort of had the idea backwards, and said, okay, well now you can just put any kind of piece of paper up there and it'll stick. which. Okay, that'll work, but who's going to buy bulletin boards with sticky adhesive on, on, on the front of it? So, uh, that really didn't, didn't pan out. So, enter another gentleman named Art Fry. And he, um, he was actually having a personal problem. Uh, he was in a church choir, and the little slips of paper that he stuck in the hymnal to mark the pages just kept falling out. And so that was a that was kind of a, a common problem. So um, he thought this was good to try to put it on the paper. So can you put the adhesive on the paper? But 3M still shelved this idea for three more years. It, it wound up being 12 years total. Can you imagine that? 12 years, uh, and and it just kind of sat on a shelf. And uh, but eventually. They got it into a market and they actually pushed it out and they did a lot of free samples and that got people using it and the more people that used it, the more people liked it and they were like, well, this is great, where can we buy some more? And the rest is history. So what can we learn from all this? What does all this tell us as inventors and entrepreneurs? Well, one is just because a few of the big guys say it's an awful product, or just a few, uh, you know, a small number of kind of bigwig people say, that, oh no, this is this is this has no useful purpose. This is unimportant. That doesn't mean that it is. Um, you know, always always look for the people that are using it and the people and and a lot of people that are using it. 
and that will give you the real information, not one person, you know, making some idle judgment call. So, another thing is that uh, you know, just because it won't something won't work in one application, that doesn't mean it wouldn't work in another. I mean, uh, uh, Silver was trying to create something for the aerospace industry. And I'd say post-it notes, outside of putting post-it notes maybe on the cockpit of a plane, I don't know if they do that or if it's even permitted, but if, uh, if it was, that might be one use for it, but it really didn't have an aerospace use. But in the office supply world, it did. It wound up having one. So if it won't work one uh, application, you might just be looking in the wrong place. So always look around in other places of, hmm, well this didn't work at all, but what about over here? That's happened more times than you know with inventions and new products. So another thing is don't discount other people's perspectives. Uh, you know, and this is why it's so important to be in a group of other like-minded people, like like one of the inventor groups out there. Uh, if you go to the United Inventors Association or the uh, Inventor Groups of America, we're on both of those lists. There are literally uh, 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 scores of groups that just help inventors that you can get with and and get with other like-minded people, and that's very very helpful. Uh, our, and if, you, if there's not one near you, you can go to kyinventors.org and uh, we have online meetings all the time now uh, that you can join us from. We have people join us from all over the country now, which is a, a really cool thing. So <clears throat> anyway, get with a group, get with other people, other like-minded people, not people that's just going to say, oh, this is an awful idea here, let me give you the reasons. Um, so uh, another thing is you might just have your application backwards. And if you do, because, you know, again, Silver thought, okay, I know, we'll make a bulletin board and we'll cover it with adhesive. Well, looking at it from the perspective of 2021, it, that's like, that's so backwards. But that's the only way he could see it at the time. There was no such thing as this. And the idea had not been thought of yet. So, so you know, if you... If you're looking at it a certain way and it just doesn't feel right or it just doesn't seem like, oh, that didn't look like this is going to catch on, then try turning it on its head. Try reversing the rules. Try turning the thing inside out. You would be amazed how many times you do that that you'll, you'll find, oh, wow, well, this works so much better. I, why wasn't I thinking of doing it this way before? And sometimes it's just because we're looking in one direction but we're not looking in the others. So, so, so try that. Flip it upside down if you're, if you're hitting a, 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 a roadblock or a, or a brick wall. Now, uh, now another thing uh, is uh, that just look in the right places, look in different places, uh, and there's an opportunity here. You know, I, I always think when I hear, read this story about uh, Silver and Art Fry, they were both 3M guys, and they probably just kind of wanted to stay in the corporate world. And it did catch on, and it did become something with 3M. And, that, and that's a wonderful thing. 3M recognized it. It took them a long time, and usually the larger the company. But I was just wondering if 3M just said, no, nah, this is so unimportant, we don't even want to deal with it. And somebody took it and became an entrepreneur and said, I'm going to take this and run with this myself if they couldn't have started a new business. And that happens a lot, too. So sometimes, just because you're, you're up against these large companies, you can be David and Goliath, because you got, you got the stones in the sling, and, and they're, they're this big giant, and they're, they move real slow, and they're slow-moving targets, and, and you've got tools that they don't, and one of them is recognizing things like this. So if you're uh, wondering if maybe do I have the next big idea, just how can you tell? Well, you'll want to sign up for Empowered Inventing Academies. Do I have the next million dollar idea? That's one of our courses at empoweredinventing.com. So go there, check it out. Uh, if it looks like it's for you, you might, you'll want to enroll in that course. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully it will be helpful for you. And I hope this video is helpful for you as well. I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. Like, subscribe, help us to build our tribe. And I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, maybe one of our online classes, 
or on the next video.